Hey guys, welcome back to Curling Chronicles Playing It Forward. Today, we are here with Danny Casper, skip of Team Casper. Well, uh, I grew up in New York, pretty close to here, about uh, 30 minutes from the mall here. I grew up in Briarcliff Manor, New York. And I uh, grew up playing a bunch of sports, and uh, when I was maybe a sophomore in high school, I decided that I wanted to just curl. Um, so I decided to quit all the other sports and just curl, and I went to college uh, making sure I was near a curling club. So I went out to the University of Minnesota, and uh, now it's a lot of what I do. So that's about it. So uh, how did you get into curling and how old were you? I got into curling, I was 11, and I got into it through my dad, his family, um, his extended family did it at a pretty high level, so they got me into it, and Andrew Stapera, member of Team Dropkin, I don't know if you guys know him, but he, he and I grew up together in the same town, and he got me into it and got me to really try to be competitive with it, so that's kind of how it went. So, uh, how did you and your team become a team? And tell us about your curling journey. Yeah, so we became a team. Uh, I was, let's see, it's been about two years with this team. And basically the uh, USA Curling program directors kind of pick a team and they say, you guys play with you guys and they put you together. Um, and I started doing that when I was uh, 20, 19 uh, into this program that they have. And uh, it's just kind of from there, they, they pick and choose teams and put you with each other. And, you know, growing up in the East Coast, there's not as many curlers out here to play with, especially at uh, the same age as you. So it was a little challenging in the beginning, but just finding people that uh, had the same goals as me and wanted to have fun was kind of how it happened. And it just played for a few years until I got a little recognized. So when and how did you know that your team worked well together? Hmm, I think uh, this might sound weird, but I think I knew we worked well together because we're four extremely different people. Um, I think uh, if we weren't a curling team, we wouldn't necessarily find ourselves in the same friends group, friend groups, which is okay, and we're friends now, but uh, I, think, I think the reason we work is we have a lot of different perspectives and think about things differently, and we're all supportive of each other on the ice, so um, that was, I, think, I think that's the main thing for us. So what does it take for you as a team to get where you are today? Um, I think similar to what I said, good teamwork and hard work and making sure you're on a team with people who have the same goals as you, right? It's important that we all know where we want to be, whether it's this year in a few years, and we all want to make sure that we're doing the similar things to, to get to that place. Now how do you balance your full-time job with Crown? Well, that's a good question. I just graduated college a couple weeks ago, so uh, we'll see. I'll have to get back to you on that, but I can say with school, um, it was tough. I mean, you know, I tried to schedule my classes to make sure that I had time to practice in the middle of the day and getting up early in the morning. Um, but it, it's doable, especially, you know, I was at a big school like University of Minnesota. There's a lot of options. Um, you know, I won't lie. I, I might sleep less than maybe most people my age. Um, but, uh, you know, that's what I signed up for. So what's the most important skill to go right in the position you play? I think the most important skill is probably composure. You know, there's a lot of stress. Uh, you know, you're throwing the last shots, you know, that have the biggest impact on the end. Um, so I think having composure is really important. And on top of just, you know, staying calm in your shots, it's important to be able to manage your teammates uh, when they, you know, are playing well, not playing well, and maybe getting a little irritated themselves. So, you know, not only do you have to manage yourself on those last shots, but also try to help the team. So do you warm up uh, individually or as a team? Uh, we, our team warms up individually. I warm up individually. I know uh, that's not always the case on every team. Um, so we all just kind of know what we need to do. Uh, I think part of that reason is because we're apart from each other so often we live in different places. So, you know, when you're practicing by yourself, you're stretching by yourself. So, you know, we don't go to practice together every day and all stretch together. So we all have our different routines and we just kind of know what works. So tell us about your workout training and stuff like that. Yeah, so uh, we work out at this place called The Training House, which is really cool in Egan, Minnesota. And we, you know, try to get into the gym three or four times a week if you can. And sometimes it's tough when you're traveling, um, but, you know, you kind of manage uh, how you can. But we go to the gym for a couple hours and do some strength training and some cardio. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's fun. Now what is your mindset is if your team is down points in a game and how do you stay focused and motivated? 
Yeah, I think uh, the first part, my, my mindset being down in a game, um, is that you got nothing to lose, right? You're already down by a few points. And, you know, I kind of think it's fun trying to think of creative ways to come back and, and create a lot of points. You know, you can get a little tricky, you can take risks. Um, so it's kind of fun in a way. Obviously, you know, I'd prefer to be winning, uh, but I think making sure that you have the right mindset about it um, is, is a good way to do it. Um, and what was, what was the second part of the question? How do you stay focused? How do I stay focused? Well, as you can tell, I don't stay very focused uh, all the time. Um, but I, you know, there is some truth to that. I think uh, a lot of people know about me that I like to be a little silly out there sometimes. And I think that's important um, to take your mind off it for a few seconds here and there. Because, you know, there's a lot of thinking out there and strategy and managing teammates. Um, but at the end of the day, I think a lot of it is leaning on teammates, right? You know, there's four of you out there and there's always at least a couple of people doing something. So um, making sure that you talk to your teammates and know what everybody's kind of in charge of. So, how do you prepare for big shots? How do I prepare for big shots? I try to prepare for big shots the same way I prepare for, you know, not big shots. Um, I think, you know, I like to think I do a, a decent job of just going about it the same way and staying calm. But maybe if you're struggling to do that a little bit, uh, it's important to take your time in the hack before you go. Sometimes when shots or moments are getting a little stressful, it's easy to rush. and and not do things the right way. So it's a good reminder. And my teammates remind me too sometimes to just uh, take my time and stay calm and breathe. And you know, you're in no rush. So how do you talk after wins or losses? Uh, yeah, I think we, you know, we, we try to talk about the games the same way, whether we win or lose. Um, our team tries to focus on, you know, how we helped each other out on the ice as teammates, whether we won or lost. You know, our team, we're not super big on outcome goals. And by that, I mean winning this many games or getting this far in a tournament. You know, in our opinion, you're trying to win every game. You're trying to win every tournament, right? You're not out there saying, oh, well, if we lose this one, it's okay. And I know sometimes it is, but the goal every time is to win. So the way that we talk about games is less the result and more so how we went about it as teammates and maybe things that we noticed about the ice. So, who has been the toughest opponent you've played, and why? Toughest opponent we've played? Well, um, you know, there's obviously John Schuster in the U.S. and, Tim, and uh, Corey Drocken are both really good teams. Uh, we were lucky enough recently, just a few weeks ago, to uh, go to our first Grand Slam event uh, in Canada, which was really cool. We played the number one team in the world and had a really nice game with them, lost on the last shot. But, you know, it's uh, those those events are really cool to go to because those are the best teams in the world and you want to see how you stack up. And, you know, we're, we're still a pretty young team, so it's exciting to get to play those teams and, and uh, try to improve. Now it's a moment in your career that you're most proud of. Moment in my career I'm most proud of. Um, I'd probably say winning junior nationals. Um, you know, there's lots to be proud of and lots of exciting things, but, you know, growing up, curling for however many years, uh, you know, that's what I think about and what you think about is winning junior nationals. I think uh, when I was younger, I didn't think this far to where I am now, like playing in the nationals and playing at these slam events that I mentioned. My uh, imagination didn't, didn't go that far. So for a long time, the focus was winning junior nationals. Um, so uh, th that was fun, yeah. So what are some tips to making it uh, to the making it to nationals level to the very top? Yeah, uh, I think uh, important things to keep in mind are, are one, finding people that have the same goals as you, as you, like I said earlier, and finding people who support each other and work hard. And obviously you need to do all those things yourself. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you, you see a lot of people focusing on one sport and trying to master it, which is which is good. But like I said earlier, I grew up playing a bunch of sports and I think it's good to take a break from curling. Like you don't need to think about curling all the time. Um, in the summertime, we, we don't curl for a couple months and I think that's important. So, uh, you know, don't get caught up in trying to trying to be the best as fast as possible. You know, obviously you want to be good quickly, but you know that you have lots of time and, and you need to be patient and it's important to do other things on top of curling. Tips and advice for younger new curlers. Um, I would say, I would say watch a lot of curling uh, on YouTube and on all these different ways that they have it. It's getting much easier now to watch good teams play. You can learn so much, and there's so many games out there to watch, and you can watch with your friends and talk about it, and just kind of you know try to figure things out together. Maybe you can 
predict what shots they're going to call before they call it. Um, so I think that's a good way to get better when you aren't on the ice or when you can't be on the ice. Um, so I think uh, that, that would be the main thing. So thank, thank you so you much for taking the time to do this. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Thanks. Nice. Good feeling.